This is another deck where the combo within the e-card set seems obvious, but much like Speed Drill that we've already talked about, it requires a little bit more finesse than you would initially think. You already know from the thumbnail and the title of this video that this combo involves Exeggutor, the psychic type one from Aquapolis. Big Explosion has the potential for some pretty heavy damage depending on how many energy are attached to Exeggutor. Note that it says the amount of energy, not energy cards. The same goes for Lateral Explosion, except it's based on the amount of energy attached to your benched Pokemon rather than those attached to Exeggutor itself. So the obvious pairing is a card that will let you accelerate energy onto the Pokemon you have on the bench to power up that Lateral Explosion. If the Pokemon you're powering up on the bench are Exeggutors, then you're also preparing those Exeggutors on your bench to move into the active position and pull off a big explosion. Depending on what your opponent's weaknesses are, you may also want to power up a Bellossom, because Knife Leaf isn't a bad attack, especially if you're hitting for double damage. The trick is making sure that you always have a basic energy in your hand so that Flower Supplement can attach it. That may seem pretty common sense for you know, a Pokemon deck to have energy in hand, but when you are balancing basic energy against the special energy cards that also help this deck, it can get a little bit tricky. Thankfully, one of those special energy does that for you. When you play Bounce Energy onto a Pokemon, it allows you to return the basic energy card that was already attached to it to your hand, which then allows for Blossom to attach it to another Pokemon on your bench. You also have Boost Energy, which is going to do exactly what it sounds like and give a one-turn major boost to an Exeggutor's Big Explosion. All very simple strategies for ensuring that your Big Explosions and Lateral Explosions are dealing as much damage per turn. It's just managing each one of these turning gears every turn to make sure that you are able to maximize the efficiency and damage output. There's a lot of other components of this deck that do help out with that efficiency, and we're going to talk about those right now. Let's jump into the deck list. In retrospect, I maybe should have picked a different playmat or adjusted the lighting, but this deck looks damn good in some purple dragon sleeves, and it's kind of hard to tell from the video, but we're starting off with Expedition Oddish. There is another Oddish from Aquapolis that also has 50 HP if you prefer those attacks. We can talk more about that at the end of the video. The same goes for Gloom. I've opted to use the one from Expedition just because I like it better, but the one from Aquapolis also has 70 HP. It has a Poke Body that doesn't get a whole lot of mileage and a pretty decent attack, but it's completely up to you which Gloom you prefer. We are going to be running a full playset of the Oddish, three copies of Gloom, and three copies of that Bellossom. This Bellossom is one that you do want to get into play as quickly as possible so that you can use Flower Supplement as many times as you need to in order to accelerate those basic energy cards onto your benched Pokemon. First few turns of the game you are going to be evolving quite a bit trying to get up into Bellossom, trying to evolve the Execute into Executor, that way you're able to attach Boost Energy as early as possible since Boost can only be attached to Evolve Pokemon. It's going to be running a 3-3 line of Execute Executor. It's going to be your primary attacker for this game. All of your setup is mostly going to be towards setting up either a big, big explosion or a big lateral explosion. So not only are your first few turns working towards evolving up into your key Pokemon, it's also setting up the tools to get the right special energy and basic energy cards that you need into your hand. One of the ways that we're going to be doing that is by running a 2-2 line of Furret. Furret's scavenger hunt power is going to be pretty crucial when you're doing the math in your head. You're figuring out exactly how much damage you need to do with an Exeggutor in order to get the knockout. You go, okay, well, I need to go get a boost energy. Well, Furret's scavenger hunt allows you to just take two cards from your hand shuffle them back into your deck, get a special energy card out, and do the thing. This deck has plenty of draw power in it, so discarding two cards, not even discarding, returning two cards from your hand to your deck to trade in for that energy card isn't going to set you back too much, especially since this deck also includes Porygon 2, which is a little bit more extra built-in draw power. Also be running a 2-2 line of that Porygon 2, and its power back up allows you to draw until you have three cards in your hand. So even if you are running your hand dry, 
with discarding off of Furret to get the energy card from your deck and then you're playing the energy card. Even if you're leaving yourself with nothing in hand, backup's going to give you three cards. You can draw right back into it. So a lot of different Pokemon going on here. This is pretty typical for an e-card deck as setup is the most important game component for this limited format. But speaking of draw power, we're going to be running three copies of Professor Oak's research across all of these deck videos. You may be asking, why don't you run a full playset of Professor Oak's research? A lot of decks call for a full playset because it's a reliable draw card. Well, I only own three copies and I don't feel like making a proxy, so I just run three of them and I work around it with other cards. Like a couple copies of Copycat, which is a more situational draw card because it's only really beneficial if your opponent has a big hand and an E card, it really depends on the matchup, whether or not your opponent has zero cards in hand or has four or more. The two main cards you're looking for for setup consistency are Pokemon Fan Club and Professor Elm's Training Method. One, to get the basic Pokemon you need for your different Pokemon lines in this deck, and Professor Elm's Training Method to get the evolutions to those basic Pokemon so that you can get them as quickly as possible. Pokemon Fan Club in particular can really save you from some bad opening hands. If you're having to start the game with, you know, just a Porygon in play, three copies of Underground Expedition can also help just for a quick search off the bottom of your deck. It also informs your mental card count by knowing what's on the bottom of your deck and kind of calculating the odds of drawing the next card that you need. This deck's also going to use a couple copies of Friend Ball which I think is an underrated card in E-Card because a lot of decks look like this one in which you're running Grass, Psychic, and Normal. The more Pokemon types you're running in a single deck, the higher the odds are that you're actually going to be able to search something out with a Friend Ball. So I think it's worth including in any deck that runs at least three different types of Pokemon. Or if you're running fewer types, but you know you're going to run into a lot of mirror matches. Going to be running a full play set of Bounce Energy as well as a full play set of Boost Energy, which are going to be easily searchable whenever you need them as long as you have that Furret in play. Again, that Bounce Energy is going to help ensure that you do have a basic energy card in hand so that you can fully utilize Bellossom's Poke Power filling up your bench with energy, which not only helps power up Executor's Lateral Explosion, but also just helps you power up the Pokemon on your bench as future attackers. In running this deck, you can get into this really smooth groove that just feels good to play, where you're, you know, trading two cards in your hand for a special energy card in your deck, like a Bounce Energy. You play the Bounce Energy, it bounces the basic energy back into your hand, you play the basic energy from your hand onto your bench using Bell Awesome. Then you use Porygon's power to draw back up into three cards. You start playing whatever you get from those cards. If you're not playing a supporter that time, you do that. You build up your setup even more. It just feels really good to play if you can get that setup and really just fall into that cycle of gameplay. As previously mentioned, there are alternative Oddish and Gloom cards from Aquapolis if they fit your playstyle better or if you just think they're pretty or whatever reason you do have the option to just swap those out. There are also a couple of Vile Plume that you could supplement the deck with if you just want an alternative grass attacker. You can use the Vile Plume from Aquapolis. It's got 100 HP. It's got a decent attack for one grass and a decent attack for three colorless energy so you can actually attach those psychic on there and use them as well. But the Expedition Vileplume is pretty nifty too because it can just sit on your bench and poison your opponent's active off of a coin flip, which helps to fill in the gap of that missing damage whenever you do flip a bunch of tails off of Exeggutor's attacks. The fact that the deck is kind of split between Grass and Psychic does help give it some coverage. You're not going to run into a lot of other decks that are weak to Grass, so you don't have a lot of opportunity to really utilize Blossom as an attacker that much, but that does mean that since you're using Executor as your main attacker, you do have to watch out for other psychic type decks. There's not a lot out there, but the ones that are played do present a major challenge to Executor. Gengar will not only Oko your Executor, but it will also slink back to the bench, preventing you from getting a revenge kill on it. Alakazam can also easily Oko an Executor for three colorless energy. But at least with Alakazam, you can just move up another Exeggutor into the active position and hit it back just as hard. 
In my opinion, the card you really have to look out for is an underrated one, Starmie. You do have the potential to deal a ton of damage to an Exeggutor for only one energy if you're willing to risk the coin flip, but realistically, if you know what you're up against, you can get a three energy onto a Starmie and just Oko an Exeggutor while also powering up one of your own Pokemon on the bench. One of the major strengths of this deck that I found in playtesting is it doesn't really have to rely on those top matchups for advantage like a lot of other decks in e-card. Instead, it just has a neutral matchup with almost everything in format. As long as you get a decent opening hand and you're able to get your setup fairly quickly, this deck doesn't really give a shit about the metagame. Hey, and that's gonna be a wrap on the third or fourth explosion deck I've done on this channel. As always, leave your thoughts down in the comments. Leave your requests down in the comments. If you like what I do on this channel, leave a like. That helps the algorithm, helps get me in that recommended list for other people that have not discovered the channel yet. Social media links are in the description, and I'll see you next video.